Incoming transmission. Greetings everybody, Irish Trekkie back with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review, this time featuring the gigantic ship that is the USS Enterprise NCC-1701J Universe Class in an XL form from Star Trek Models Hero Collector. We previously recorded a normal issue way back, it's, it seems like a, 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 a oh, a, another time. It's been a long time since we've had the J out. But I'm very interested to see what the XL will bring to the table. And uh, stay tuned for later on in the video where we will be comparing the regular version versus the XL. Is it worth the investment of uh, the price associated with the XL model? I'll let you be the judge of that for the final say. But um, I will share my thoughts and opinions along the way. Uh, before I do, I want to say a big shout out to Hero Collector for sending this over. It gives me the opportunity to do reviews like this for you fine folks. And that's all as a result of your support as well. So thank you very much for checking out these little videos. And uh, hitting the like and subscribe button and sharing and getting in the conversation as well. All the links are in the doobly-doos down below. So, let's continue on with the video, shall we? Before we dive into the video today, I want to give a massive shout out to the Patreon supporters for the channel. Your support on a monthly basis is absolutely outstanding and uh, gives me the opportunity to continually revise and improve the channel, my techniques and skill as well. And uh, again, thank you very much for um, supporting as you do. So again, credit to each and every single freaking one of you people. Um, if you want to become a patron, don't forget the links are in the description down below. And uh, again, I hope you enjoyed the video today. So let's get on with that, shall we? So big box, as you can see. Um, I don't have the biggest hands in the world either, but pretty big box, all the same. So I'm just gonna open it up and get a first look. Hopefully it's in one piece. Yes, it is. Mission accomplished, delivery people. Okay, so we have a very large ship, as you can see. Now I'm using a little bit of a different mic setup. Hopefully it's working, as my other mic was failing me. Um, here we have 1033A slash A, uses Enterprise NCC 1701J. Centrally mounted, as you can see here. Give that a good press in. And uh, yeah, we'll have a look and see what this is like on the stand a little bit later on. And, ooh, what's the easiest way to take this out? Probably by the center part of it. Ooh, it's heavy. Die cast. It's all die cast as well, I think. Yeah, there's probably going to be a little bit of plastic. Obviously, plastic nacelles, but um, she's heavy. Oh, there's your plastic on the front. So, um, yeah, that's our first look at the Enterprise J. So let's get up close and personal, shall we? So here she is. I'm just about um, getting it in frame <laughs> in the, the angle that I have at the moment. But um, it is an impressive size. And again, if we just, let's do a close pass. It's, it's quite heavy. I'd say it's primarily die cast with some kind of plastic uh, additions to it as well. But uh, let's check out our registry here. There's a blemish just in front of that, which is a shame, unfortunately, because it's, it's a really kind of focal point. You're gonna be checking out the USS. Um, alignment. Not great. We've seen smaller decals, to be honest with you, but that's not fantastic along there as well. You can see a little bit of Aztecan with some, I'm assuming these are lights, which will be gigantic on this. Um, you can see some of the paint applications on that as well. And then these long, which again will be massive strips of windows across this you have your nav lights central bridge area 
And again, you have some little detailing down there as well. So that is actually plastic. Kind of looks like it's painted, but it's plastic. Your long pylons with your very delicate nacelles. So again, Doug has often talked about this ship kind of being grown. Hence the, the very, you know, unbelievably thin pylons on her. I'm assuming impulse at the back. Very sleek. It's an interesting design. It's not one of my favorite designs. I find it a, a curiosity just on, on a kind of, you know, a possibility or an engineering standpoint. Um, I always felt as if it, there was kind of like a warp tool was just used to kind of stretch this out with the way these um, windows are always kind of aligned along the nacelles or the, the, the main saucer. Paint alignment's pretty okay. You can see it's a little bit of a drift here. I'm curious to compare this to the regular size just to see if there's any more detailing. Like you have your paint apps for your Azteking. Um, your seam, it's it's well hidden. These look like these points, these white points just look very just dabbed on to be honest with you. No additional detailing on the deflector. It does look like a, a you know a whale shark's mouth. Very sleek profile. Nacelles seem pretty well aligned, as you can see back here. And again, the profile shows you how high and the angle that these kind of bend back on. Nice profile off the ship and in a very curious way that the nacelles are designed as well they're kind of suspended down from these very thin pylons and again you know look at discovery very long and thin and slender pylons and again we have the excelsior as well that has that design carried in through to the enterprise e and beyond as well you can see your sculpt detail in here. So again, some panels, some detailing, points of interest. Nice gradient fill on the lights as well. It's a shame about the registry. And like these, these just look like low. The paint app in general just looks like it's low resolution. Um, I was hoping for a little bit more detailing just to take advantage of the Enterprise J. It's, it's cool. But... We'll see what it's like in comparison to our smaller sister, just to see if it was taken advantage of, if there is more detail in here. Um, paint apps are, are pretty okay, to be honest with you. Um, the color gradient between the plastic and the die cast is pretty spot on. And again, it's just remarkably heavy. So hopefully it'll sit well. Um, but yeah, let's see what she's like on the stand and we'll compare it to our smaller uh, sibling as well and then we'll have a look and see what goodies lay inside the magazine so there she is on the stand and um, sits pretty central a little bit of a raise in it just to give it a little kind of a bit of a dynamic feel to it it's not just a flat completely horizontal stance um but yeah it just kind of towers over that base and even on my turntable um as you can see here uh, it looks pretty um like the, 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 that span off that saucer section is pretty impressive. And again, the length is pretty impressive as well when with the sweep back nature of the pylons in addition to the long spindly nacelles as well. Again, it's a curious design. It's not one of my favorites though. Um, but as I say, I, I'm going to kind of go link into that curiosity stance point, you know, the site-to-site -site transporters, the communities that built up, what kind of missions um did this undertake as well but um yeah again never going to uh turn away an enterprise um would like to see you know f from f2j um see what comes up on that i know there's uh variants of that online if you do a search but um 
yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But what I'm going to do here now is we're going to compare it to the smaller version just to see if there is any extra detailing um, that can be found on uh, the Enterprise J. There's the two Enterprise J side by side. The XL does dwarf the regular version of it. Having a look at the model as well, there's a little bit more detail on the sculpt, um, like along the nacelles here, and there ha there are different variances in the paint apps for the windows. Again, the addition of a more pronounced um, module back here as well, but it's not a million miles away. Um, the main differences really are kind of on the paint apps more than anything. The Aztec is a little bit more dynamic in areas um, along the kind of inner side of the pilot, the saucer even. And uh, again, the gradient fill for the center of the saucer section here as well. But overall, the detailing, it's pretty similar between the two of them. And we've had this on Excel models before. Again, like the, the runabout comes to mind where the runabout is just an XL version of the regular uh, run um, runabout, which is a shame when you look at some of the detail that could have been put in the sculpt of it. I know these models take a year to kind of uh, from conception to uh, being on the shelves there thereabouts. Um, but I always think the XLs are a great opportunity to kind of go to town on the detailing. It's the whole point, in my opinion, of XLs being around. And again, they are pricey. Um, I don't know if I would, again, run out and just singularly buy the Enterprise J if I wasn't a collector of the collection. Um, again, for completion, it's out there. Uh, or if you're just collecting the XL versions, it's a decent model. I will give it that, but... Like when you have the regular version and the XL, it just doesn't have that leap in detail that you would like to see. Um, but again, it's Enterprise J. Like, where are you going to get another Enterprise J? Again, you could 3D print and stuff like that as well, I'm sure. But uh, that's not in my uh, wheelhouse of uh, skills. And I suck at painting and stuff like that as well. But um, what I will say, it's impressively heavy. It's impressively sized. Uh, I'm going to have to find out where I'm going to put this now. But um, yeah, it's it's the biggest scale XL ship I think we've gotten outside of, you know, like the Discovery collections and stuff like that as well. But um, yeah, so there's the XL side by side with the regular run. Enterprise J as partially seen. Uh, in the Star Trek Enterprise series and um, designed by Doug Strexer. So let's see what goodies lay inside the magazine, shall we? So folks, here we have the Universe Class Enterprise J launched 26th century, operated by the United Federation of Planets with a length of 3,219 meters. She's a big one, for sure. So, we have our two sections, Designing the USS Enterprise J and Doug Drexler Starship Designs. Um, first appearance, Azati Prime. Um, last appearance, Azati Prime. 26th century. Nothing uh, in addition there. Kind of cool profile with some close-up shots. And, again, we've seen how we mount that there as well. Actually, I don't know if I mentioned it. It was pretty secure on the mount. But just be conscious with the weight of it that... Um, it doesn't kind of fall off, to be honest with you, um, if you bump into it. So, we have design in the Enterprise J. So, Doug Drexler wanted the Enterprise J to look as futuristic as possible, even though it was only on screen for a matter of seconds, and even partially on screen as well. So, here we have some quick renders, what looks like the Enterprise uh, NX-01, with a slightly different configuration off the Enterprise J, it's kind of like the pylons are in like a reverse swoop, almost kind of like a very slender, futuristic Akira. But you can kind of get the vibes off the design there as well, which is cool. Uh, Enterprise J was designed in less than two days. The process began with some very quick sketches. Again, that's the whole thing about like production TV as well. Um, 
sometimes they don't even want they want a, a reference to a ship but not even designing it and then if it's like a ship of the week um the time constraints oops hitting the camera time constraints can be unbelievable and to whip up something in two days that uh will add to the you know awesome lore of star trek that's a heavy burden and um again a mammoth task and fair dues to doug drexler for um uh doing what he did so you can kind of see again some rough uh concept sketches there as well um also doug revisited the um the altair uh class so we already we have that in the collection we have the review that already done so do check out the playlist and um again you have like the altair with a saucer section which is pretty cool up there and then um the enterprise j as well i kind of dig the whole vibe again about it uh, i know it kind of hark into the curiosity factor of it but you know universe class you know jumping between um galaxies and uh having whole kind of uh, populations within a ship um that can quite happily survive on there and what tech would be in a 26th century um united federation of planets ship as well oh good fodder for the imagination so here we have uh, Doug Drexler Starship Design. So over the year, Doug Drexler designed ships for Starfleet, the Borg, uh, Vulcans, making a massive impact um, on the look of Star Trek. So again, ringed nacelles for early concepts of uh, early Federation. Again, Voyager um, type of uh, run-throughs as well. Again, when you look at this in comparison to the Altair that um, developed on, so again, reworking all of that as well um dig this ship kind of almost like a, a sequest dsv vibe as well um i mean that with great honor as well because that's uh, i love the design of that ship um yeah again romulan ships in there as well um shuttles uh doug has had a massive impact on um star trek and again you know the the ships of the line calendars as well so again the shuttles i can define the tactical cube as well love this pyramidal type of um craft as well again borg borg love their geometric designs don't they and again i always loved um these types of uh shuttle renders as well again nx01 fantastic ship loved the refit version of it as well um for kind of like you know if season five uh would have happened as well so that's fantastic and again, we have some more uh, Vulcan designs as well. So again, very interesting work there by Doug. Um, great to see all these renders in one place. Again, Zindi. One thing you can say about Enterprise is the, the plethora of ships that we've had the uh, distinct advantage of enjoying over the years. And seeing them in the collections that we have as well is absolutely fantastic. And again, I've already mentioned the refit class. The refit off the NX-01, that is. Um, again, bringing it into that almost, not conventional starship design, but that bridge between like the way the Constitution classes and beyond uh, fed into it as well with having the drive section. But it was great to see that kind of come full circle with the likes of the Akira as well, you know, and uh, the Norway class and Steamrunner as well. Some fantastic uh, ships from First Contact there. So... Let's close out on the back graphic, shall we? So, folks, there we have the XL variant of the Enterprise J from Hero Collector. We've compared the two ships in scale side by side. Um, let me know in the comments below, what do you think between the two of them? Are you on the verge of getting the XL? Have you got the XL? Do your thoughts align with mine? Would you like to see more detail on it? Um, so again sound off in the comments below on your way down there you'll also see in the description box all the playlists previous reviews so if you want to spend the day checking out some other videos that's going to be the best place for you <laughs> and if you want to continue the conversation outside of the video uh, you'll normally find me over on twitter or instagram as well so just uh, search for uh, irish trekking you'll find me as always thanks for stopping by and if you're new to the channel and uh, want to keep up to date uh, do hit that subscribe button and notification bell as well because youtube can be finicky at the very best of times but your support is always greatly appreciated and uh, again thanks for stopping by as i say 
stay safe have a great rest of the day weekend week whenever you're watching this and i will see you in the next video so take it easy and goodbye yeah.